Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and some of the world's biggest stars and one of the biggest bands through the 70s, 80s, 90s and today's was Shawaddy Waddy. They're a pop group from Leicester who had over 40 hits in the charts and they're still rocking and rolling today. And the man who's in charge is Dave Bartram. How are you? I'm really, really well, thank you, Alex. You know, it's lovely to talk to you. When I look at your career, it is astonishing, and I have to wonder how showbiz and rock and roll it really was back in the day when you were all young, single, and enjoying yourselves. Well, you say look, that, uh, that term showbiz, which is it's kind of a forgotten term, really, but that, that was very much what Shawaddy Waddy were all about. and uh, it, it, it was even incorporated into the name, the first four letters of the name, show. It was so important when the band emerged in the in the se- early 70s uh, to have you know that that sort of showy aspect and it, it wasn't just about being cool in fact it was probably more about being uncool uh, and going out there and trying to out glam the next band or the next person that was likely to um you were likely to be rubbing shoulders with on top of the pops but it but it was a fantastic era and a very colorful era and an era of real people when was the moment, Dave, when you thought, Christ, we've made it, this is it, the dream has come true? Because it's a slog getting going, isn't it? Well, it, 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 is, it is a slog getting going, but uh, you have to believe. And, you know, one thing I, I did when I turned a, a professional uh, before I'm, I'm sure what it, what it were actually formed in the music business, it was a dream I had, but not, not just a dream, it was a belief. And... Um, you know, you, you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to put yourself in the shop window to be, to be a success. And when, but when the success actually arrives, it's, it's, it's kind of like it, it, it almost passes you by. You, you're just so wrapped up in the whole thing um, that you, you don't really stop and think, oh, great, you know, I've, I've made it now. You know, the, the, you know, the future years are, go, are going to be very, very rosy. It's, it's not quite like that. You just keep grafting and you just keep doing what you do and, you know, I, I loved running out on stage for all those years, and that was all part and parcel of it. And, and you, you know, you're just constantly busy. So, you know, it, 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 it does kind of, it, it all sort of flashes by. Uh, and, and 40 years in the rock and roll industry, it, it, it's hard to believe that it, it was actually four decades. For us on the radio, you're such great relief because your stuff is feel good, it's optimistic, and people love to hear it. Was that deliberate that you didn't want to be some melancholy sort of self righteous band? Well, I think we were a very colourful band, and you know, I mentioned that word again, show. Uh, you know, we we would go out in our colour colourful drapes, and uh, we'd be pounding around, you know, full of energy, and it, it was part and parcel of what the band was all about, and certainly very much part of the the band's success and and why people warm to us but uh but there was another side to the band which a lot of the fans appreciated on the albums where a lot of the self rights and things uh, showed another side and uh, probably a more gloomy side but the but the actual image of the band was was the colorful and lively one when you were back in the day doing those 70s shows and into the 80s, how sexy was it? Were you disciplined as a band and you said, OK, no drinking before, or did you just enjoy every show, get through it? How hedonistic was it? The hedonism really kicked in after the gigs. I mean, we, we would have a couple of tops of brandy or something like that just to give us a bit of Dutch courage. But um, but we were always a very, very conscientious band. We, you know, we, we, we knew that it, it was about the show and... And um, uh, there were a few just odd sort of undisciplined moments that uh, that slipped through the net, you know, where, whereby you, you, uh, I remember a college date in uh, at Keble College in Oxford where the band's performance was delayed by something like two and a half hours and we didn't take to the stage till after midnight. And I remember it was the only time I personally ever went on stage um, what shall we say, hammered, <laughs> for argument's <laughs> sake. And, um, and it was something that I never really, I just never felt in control of, of, of that gig, even, even though the audience were uh, in, in a pretty similar state. It, it was mm. something I wasn't comfortable with, and, and neither were most of the boys. And, you know, that, I think that just the, the conscientious wanting to do a, a, a good set and, and wanting to impress was the most important thing. And then... Yeah, the, the hedonism definitely kicked in after the after we'd left the stage. 
And of course, you were hugely successful. There's no doubting that. 23 top 40 hits is nothing to be sniffed at. Megastars today would dream of that success. Are you glad you did it when you did? Because today the industry is so shameful. It's so corporate and boring. Um, you, you did have the good years of being a rock band to be successful. Well, we, we were part of an era again when, when we emerged where really you had to be able to cut it live. Right. Um, the modern era, unfortunately, the too many kind of TV shows. It's 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 all artists have broken through the media. Really, uh, it, it, it's all about PR. Which, but but in the seventies, you know, if if you could cut it live, uh, and you know, you, you you look good on TV, you'd got you got a fighting chance. But yeah. uh, but now it, it it's kind of it's very much who you know and uh, rather than what you know or how talented you are. You, you it saddens me in the modern age that there aren't many young writers coming through. They just don't get the you know, the, the chances sort of that we had and uh, and people had in the seventies and eighties. But um, mm. but you know, there's still some very very good artists out there. I, I'm not decrying uh, modern music completely, but uh, but the manufactured side these days it's it's a little bit over the top. And, of course, back in the day, you were two bands that became one band. That's right, isn't it? There were two sort of groups that came together. Well, we always used to joke it was one and a half bands, you know. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, it, it was basically the amalgamation of, of two bands, you know, which, which made the thing you know, quite a spectacle in itself, that there were these eight sort of brightly clad sort of individuals uh, leaping about all over the place, but uh, it, it, it was a bit of a spectacle. But but you know there were great times. The seventies, people didn't take themselves ultra seriously, and, and it, it was all part and parcel of, of of you know why there's still so much love for that era. Indeed, and you're back on tour now, gigging and gagging all across the UK. People loving it, still selling out. Uh, tremendous testament to your back catalogue as much as your performance, I suppose. Is it the performance or is it the songs or do you have to have both for longevity? I mean, you've got to have the hits behind you for the people to, to want to come along and, and be nostalgic. Yeah. Obviously, that's you know they, they come along to hear the hits, they come along to, to see a few bodies sort of gyrating around the stage uh, everybody loves nostalgia I mean we, we I think nostalgia is is more important in the modern age you know uh, particularly you know, looking back to to, to what we, we were just talking about modern music a lot of it is not very inspiring so a lot of kids are very very educated when it comes to 70s 80s and, and 90s material but, mm. you know it, it's the music industry, I mean, it's, it's what rocks your boat, isn't it, at the end of the day? And it, and it doesn't matter what era it comes from. And of course, you are back on tour. If you want to find out more, put Shawadi Wadi into Google and all the tour dates will come up. And certainly travel is something that's been a big part of it lately. Your book is fascinating. When did your passion for travel come about? Well, obviously, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to travel with a band to, you know, some very far-flung destination out to the Far East and to, you know, Rio in Brazil and do, do concerts and things out there. And, I, I, you know, once I'd started, once I'd tested the water, uh, my thirst for travel just became utterly insatiable. Mm. And, uh, and, it, and it still is. In fact, uh, you know, as we speak, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to going off to China and Japan uh, in, in April. And I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to that uh, it's it's such an educational thing um, mm. to to experience other cultures. Um, you know, uh, we my wife and I went out to uh, South America three years ago, and um, you know we really didn't quite know what to expect. You know, we, we expected to see you know a few llamas and things like that, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the actual experience of, of being in countries like Bolivia, where you 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 really rub shoulders with with poverty on a, on a level such as I've never seen, mm. uh, other, other than possibly in India, it um, it, re it really really o opens your eyes. And um, I, I remember during that trip to South America, that um, yeah, my wife and I looked at each other after, after touring for about thirty days, and we just said to each other, "Do you know I feel all sceneried out?" Right. You know, because <laughs> there's, so, there's so much stuff to see, and it's. Uh, 
people that don't travel, I, I think they're on a, you know, a huge, um, well, a, a really educational, um, to see different cultures firsthand is, is just something that blows my mind. Finally, before we go, I was having dinner last week with the manager of DLT, who I understand is absolutely devastated and ruined. I know that you stood up at the trial. It's very relevant and prevalent to what we were talking about earlier with the 70s. Um it was very brave of you to do that. Does it sadden you when you look back at what's going on with the stars of the 70, many of which were part of Top of the Pops and people you met and worked with? Well, what saddens me is, you know, that obviously it's still filling the airwaves, uh, the, the stories come, coming out, you know, there's constant stuff about Savile, there's MPs. There's, it, 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 it seemed to me the year of... People in high positions, uh, unfortunately, um, too many people turn blind eyes, and I think that that is why um, the seventies are being lambasted in in the way that they are. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I was there firsthand. You know, I, I met uh, several several times, and uh, you know, I did DLT and, uh, and all of the others, and ultimately, it's. If people don't blow the whistle, people are allowed to get away with things. Mm. And during an era where, you know, pinching a girl's bottom was kind of deemed to be acceptable, um, some people took it a little bit too far. And um, when, when you see kind of some of the atrocities that actually, these people have actually got away with, it, it, it doesn't sudden me, it, it, it actually angers me. And... Um, you know, I, I really, you know, I hope several rots in, in the ground. And um, yeah. uh, it, it's something I, f I feel very, very strongly about. Um, as for, you know, DLT, well, you know, he, sh he should have been growing up enough to keep his hands to himself. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. You know, we, we all have responsibilities as adults. Mm. And particularly when you're in the public eye, you, you, you know, you, 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 um, yeah. you know, we, we all have skeletons in our closets, but you know, we have a responsibility to, you know, to be decent human beings. I do get that. I did the last interview with Savile. I've interviewed Cliff. I've interviewed Jimmy Tarbuck. I've interviewed Stuart Hall, Rolf Harris, all these people who have been involved, some guilty, some not, some more guilty than others. I think the issue has now become, though, that we've sort of put everybody in the same category. Well, yes. You know, as I said, we all have the responsibility of, as adults and, and, and actually while we're on the subject I, I think the allegation of Clitchett are utterly un un understand it because um, you know he's a very very decent guy I've met him on numerous occasions and I will be um, devastated if, if, uh, you know, if there is any truth in the rumours which I, I strongly doubt but um, uh, I, 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 I just, it's, it's kind of there's been so much of this stuff on, on the TV and, uh, and radio that I think people are, be are beginning to get s you know, sick of it. And mm. plus, plus, you know, there, there were other people who weren't celebrating these offences as well, and a lot of those haven't been brought to task. And Do you think there's any defence in it was a different time and actually the odd grabbing of a knocker here or the pinching of a bum there was the way it was at Radio 1 or at Top of the Pops? Is there any defence in that, do you think? Well, it, I won't say it's, it's not indefensible, but, but um, you know, it, it was an era apart. You know, okay, and it was a, it was a more liber liberal era. And, and you know, by the same token, I, I think today uh, in, in the modern era, everything has gone too far the other way. You know, this the political correctness. Some of it is so nonsensical. Yeah. You know, that, that's angers me equally. But um, but at the same time. You know, you, ha you have to show respect to fellow human beings. And, you know, perhaps if you, if you know somebody tapping on the backside, I don't know, whatever, whatever rocks your boat, but ultimately, you know, like, like I keep saying, you know, we, we strive to be decent human beings. And I think, you know, the 99.9% .9 of, of people in the United Kingdom are decent human yeah. beings. It's, it's always the, the minority of moronic um, people who, uh, I don't know, perhaps have large 
inflated egos that, uh, that spoil it for everyone else. Yeah, and it's a shame that it's become a taint on the 70s and 80s particularly, isn't it? Well, it, it, it is, but, um, you know, you look back through history, there's been uh, a, a lot of odd things that have happened in history, and I'm sure there'll, there'll be stuff dug up from the modern era in, in years to come. It's just, it just seems to be what, uh, what the press do. Yeah. Listen, congratulations on an amazing life and career and here's to the future. Shawadi Wadi are back on tour across the UK, rocking and rolling, doing the hits, so many of them. How many do you get in? I mean, there's 23 top 40 hits. Do you get through them all? Well, uh, there's a lot to go out, yeah. Um, <laughs> the band perform a, a two-hour show these days just to, to cram everything in and it's it's about giving value for money and it's about entertaining people and that's, uh, that's what Shawadi Wadi continue to do. Dave, I hope you realise how much fun you've brought into people's lives and how great you've been for DJs like myself who love to play your records. Dave Bartram from Shawadi Wadi, thank you for your time.